Hi, and welcome to our video 11.1, Describing Chemical Reactions. So, so far we've done a lot of writing chemical formulas, and now we're actually ready to get into writing chemical equations. So, a chemical equation deals with one or more reactants changing into one or more products. And it's written with the reactants on the left side and the products on the right. For example, if iron and oxygen combine to make iron oxide, right here we have our reactants, which are iron and oxygen, and the product, in this case it's a singular product, iron oxide. Generally, though, we won't write them with words like this. We will write them with the chemical formulas. So we have some amount of Fe iron and some amount of oxygen. That's going to make Fe2O3. Okay. Now, this is what's called a skeleton equation. It's not showing how much of each we have. We're going to get into balancing and really showing how much of each we have in a little bit. All right, then you can have something like a catalyst, which speeds up a reaction. And it'll be written like this. This is uh, an example. You have uh, hydrogen peroxide in the presence of MnO2, and it's written up above the arrow like this, making water and oxygen. All right, so what are all these extra things that we haven't really dealt with yet? Well, Here's a guide to what they all are. All right, so the plus is usually, you know, separating the two reactants and the products, right? If you have H2 plus O2, and it's going to make some amount of water. The arrow, not an equals, it's a yields. These two t reactants yield this product. Sometimes, and we'll get to this a little bit later in the year, to reversible reactions, a reaction that can go both ways. And that'll have this double arrow here showing it can go this way or it can go that way. Uh, after these, you'll have these letters showing what they are usually. So like with H2, it's a gas, so it would have the G in parentheses. O2 is also a gas, so it would have the G in parentheses. The H2O is a liquid. So I'd have the L in parentheses. So you have solid, liquid, and gas. AQ is an aqueous solution, something dissolved in water. So you might have something written like Na plus AQ, Cl minus AQ, to show it's an aqueous in solution. Above the arrow, you might have this delta or heat to show that heat is supplied. Sometimes you might see it written as, here's a reactant plus heat yields some amount of products. And just like we saw a moment ago, a chemical formula written above the arrow just shows the presence of a catalyst. All right, that brings us to balancing chemical equations. And the common question is, why do we even have to do this? Well, because of the law of conservation of mass, it says matter can't be, dis be created or destroyed. So when we write a chemical equation, we have to keep track of everything. We can't lose anything and we can't gain. So for example, right, hydrogen plus oxygen is water. So like I wrote earlier, there's some amount of hydrogen and it exists in nature as H2, so we have to write it as such, plus some amount of oxygen also exists in nature as O2, so we write it as such, is going to yield some amount of water. All right, so when we look here, we have to count how many of each are on each side. So here, there's two hydrogens on the left and two hydrogens on the right. So far, so good. But we have two oxygens on the left and one oxygen on the right. So if we left this like this, that would mean that one oxygen atom got destroyed, and you can't have that. So... What we do is we put what's called a coefficient in front of this, kind of like we've done in class before. And this shows that there's four hydrogens on this side and two oxygens on this side. So now our oxygens match, but we have four hydrogens here and only two here. So if we put a two coefficient in front of here, that gives us four hydrogens on this side, two oxygens on this side. Here now we have four hydrogens over here 
and two oxygens and they match so we know we're good and this is a balanced equation so the final balanced equation is 2h2 plus o2 yields 2h2o all right so another example AgNO3 plus H2S yields Ag2S plus HNO3. I'm going to rewrite that just because my scribble got in the way. AgNO3 plus H2S yields Ag2S plus HNO3. So now if I look here, I have one silver here and two silvers here, so I'll need two of these. So now my silvers are good. I have two nitrogens on this side and one on this side, so I'll put a two here. Now my nitrogens are good. Oxygens, I have six oxygens here and six oxygens here, so they're good. I have one sulfur here, one sulfur here, so they're good. I have two hydrogens over here and two hydrogens over here, so everything checks out. Okay, so there are some rules not necessarily something you have to memorize these rules but you have to get used to doing them in order step by step so the first thing you know like I did with the water I determined the correct formula for the reactants of the products when I said all right so it's hydrogen plus oxygen yields h2o and I wrote the skeleton equation out okay so now and determine the number of atoms two hydrogens two hydrogens two oxygens only one oxygen so now then I balance the elements one at a time using coefficients okay and very important never balance an equation by changing the subscript I didn't change these numbers I added a coefficient to add now two. so now I go back and check based on this coefficient there's four hydrogens here so I put a coefficient of two in front of this hydrogen and see that I have four and four and then two oxygens and two oxygens and then I make sure all the coefficients are in the lowest possible ratio I'm finding the lowest common denominator and since there's a one here that can't get any lower so I know I'm done all right take a few moments before moving on to actually read through these and make sure you understand them write down any questions you might have and we'll of course practice some of these in class. All right, that brings us to the end of 11.1, and I'll see you guys in school.